Hello everyone, this is Imran from Gaming Till Disconnected, and in this video we're going to be looking at the Bit Phoenix Aegis. Before I start, this case is for M80X motherboards, so if you are hoping to install anything larger, I'm sorry to say that this isn't the case for you. We were sent the blue version of the Aegis from BitPhoenix via Overclockers UK, but it's also available in red, yellow, black and white. We'll be looking at the model with the customizable icon display, but there's a variant known as the Aegis Core, which has a solid BitPhoenix logo instead. Inside the box you'll find screws for the fans, motherboard, water pump bracket and PSU, one water pump bracket, a motherboard standoff adapter, one extra motherboard standoff, two pairs of 2.5 inch hard drive sleds, four pairs of 3.5 inch hard drive sleds and some cable ties. This is a new design for Bit Phoenix, and it definitely looks appealing. Although the case has a premium look, the entire case is glossy and you may find yourself battling with fingerprints and smudges. Starting with the front panel we have a simple black glass like cover with a blue trim. You'll notice that there's no space or opening for an optical drive, however the lack of this feature is likely to go unmissed by the vast majority of people. In the middle towards the top of this black cover is the icon display which almost seamlessly fades into the black cover when the icon display is turned off. Following the blue trim to the sides you'll notice black perforated grills, below these grills are some curved slits. The bottom of the front panel also has a gap that acts as a handle for easy removal of the front panel. Once you remove the front panel you'll see foam covering the rear of the black perforated grills, acting as a dust filter and somewhat aiding in noise reduction. However the slits near the bottom don't have the same foam, so some dust can still make its way through. Also on the reverse side of the front panel you'll see the icon display unit which is connected via a proprietary header that pops through a gap in the chassis, but we'll take a closer look at the display in a bit. Moving on to the chassis itself, there is a removable dust filter that is held in place by four magnets and guided into place by some clips. Unfortunately, the bottom two magnets don't have enough overlapping metal from the case for it to work effectively, so I would often find the dust filter hanging out of place, just enough for it to get in the way when I was trying to reattach the panel. I think this could have worked better with an extra couple of clips at the bottom. Moving on to the back, there are two rubber grommets at the top right to facilitate water cooling. Below them is a honeycomb mesh which covers the rear exhaust fan, with two mounting options providing extra clearance inside for a top radiator. At the very bottom is the cutout for the power supply, with five blanking plates for expansion cards above it, leaving the IO cutout near the middle. The right side, the side the motherboard is installed, is just a plain panel, whereas the left side has a windowed panel, with the window measuring 340mm wide with a height of 330mm. The windowed panel is great news for people who like to customise and show off the inside of their PC, however this does mean that if you have the hard drive cages installed they will be visible. The top panel further develops the uniqueness of the Aegis design with some angular extrusions at the side. On this top panel we'll find some IO ports and three buttons. The left button controls fan speeds for the fans connected to the four fan hub, with the LED indicating whether the fans are set to a low, medium or high speed. The top panel also dips in the middle and here you'll find another removable dust filter. To remove it you simply press it in and the dust filter will pop out slightly. You'll have to dig your nail into one of the slits so you can grip the filter and lift it out completely. Like every aspect of this case, the top panel can also be removed, in this case by removing two thumb screws at the back. Although if you have the motherboard installed, be careful removing this panel as the cables from the IO ports are directly fixed to the top panel. Upon removing the top panel, you'll find space for dual 140mm or dual 120mm fan slots or a 280mm radiator, but be aware as the design of the top panel can hinder the efficiency of the fans in this location. Finally on the underside of the case you'll find four rubber feet that raise the case 15mm off the surface, and two vents spanning almost the entire length of the case to aid the power supply and other fan spots. There is another dust filter that covers both ventilation areas, this dust filter is also held in place by magnets. This is the second time that BitPhoenix have used an icon display in one of their cases, the first one being the Pandora. As stated earlier the icon display is installed at the front panel. It's a 2.8 inch display with 240 by 320 pixel resolution and it can display most image files to customise the front of the case, however it's not very bright and the screen feels too recessed that the viewing angles aren't that great. Despite that I really like it and it provides a great level of personalization that can be customised at a whim. On a plus note, BitPhoenix left the source code open for developers, so it could display useful information about the PC sometime in the future when developers get around to it. Due to the modular design, you can essentially take out almost anything and everything, 
The case comes with one 120mm fan, but I would have really appreciated one or two extra fans as standard for this price range. Due to the thin space between the motherboard tray and the side panel, you have to route your cables in such a way that they evenly spread out, instead of having it bundled into one huge cable. This method is aided by the many conveniently placed anchor points. The BitPhoenix Aegis will fit most full-size graphics cards with ease. There is even space for two GPUs for you to utilise SLI or Crossfire. You could also fit longer cards if you didn't install a radiator at the front location and install fans on the outside of the case. Bear in mind this does mean removing the front dust filter. However, most people should be fine with the current size of most graphics cards inside the BitPhoenix Aegis. As for cooling, the Aegis has a great deal of options. The front of the case supports three 120mm fans, or two 140mm fans, and a 360mm radiator, which can be mounted on a strip for flexibility. You can also remove the front dust filter and attach more fans for a push-pull configuration. However, for the top fan location, you will have to make a compromise to either leave the icon display on and have one less fan, or have a fan and not have the icon display on. You can also add four more fans thanks to the hub, whereas an M80X motherboard will probably limit you to two system fans. All the drive cages are modular, providing a great deal of build options. The bottom drive cage fits two 3.5 inch drives, and the cage can be moved towards the front, providing extra room for longer power supplies. Although, be cautious of your fan layout, as this may limit your cooling options. There is another cage that fits two more 3.5 inch drives at the top right, which attaches to another drive cage via a single clip. I would have preferred a more secure option than a single clip, without compromising the modular design. The provided sleds for the two 2.5 inch drives work ok, but one of the metal fastenings seems slightly misaligned, thus making it hard to slide in and out, but I'm sure this is an isolated issue. Now, if you didn't want to use any of the cages, there are two more hidden 2.5 inch drive spots, one located behind the motherboard tray, and the other below where the normal drive cages would sit. As for the power supply, there's a shield that hides the PSU. This will fit a standard size ATX unit, but long units will require moving the hard drive cage that sits at the bottom, or removing it entirely depending on your cooling setup. Before I get to the conclusion, I just wanted to mention that we're looking for writers for our website. So click the annotation on the screen right now, or head to the link in the description if you're interested. Getting back to the review, I really like the inclusion of the icon display. It adds an extra level of personalization, but I think it could be a bit brighter. And although the case is made up of a mixture of plastic and metal, it still has a premium feel. However, the glossy finish on every aspect of the exterior means a lot of fingerprints, smudges and dust, which may have you cleaning the case often. It feels spacious inside the case due to the modular design, and there's plenty of cable management options thanks to the anchor points. There is a plethora of fan mounting options, so airflow can be dictated by you as opposed to being restricted by the case's design. For first time and veteran PC builders, this is a great choice. With the different colour options, it provides PC builders with a fair amount of freedom with their builds, just as the modular interior allows for a great deal of flexibility. Thank you for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then please give it a like and share it if you think someone's going to find it useful. It really helps us out and we're always grateful. If you think there's something we could do differently then please let us know in the comments below. And if you like the content that we put up, then be sure to subscribe and change your subscription preferences to be notified when we upload a video. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Google+. And why not check out some of our other review videos. Once again, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.